welcome back to Teacher Gimbal Channel. Today we're going to be talking about Illustrative Math Algebra 1, Unit 2, Lesson 3, Practice. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe so you can keep seeing content like this. Let's get started. Problem 1. A landscaping company delivered crushed stone to a construction site. The table shows the total weight of pounds, W, of n loads of crushed stone. Which equation could represent the total weight in pounds for n loads of crushed stone? So let's situate ourselves to the table. When we have no pounds of crushed stones, it has no loads. When there's 2,000 weight in crushed, 2,000 pounds of crushed stones, we have one load. 4,000 is two loads. 6,000 is three loads. In this case, we want to know the weight in pounds for n loads of crushed stone. So it seems that each load is 2,000. So 2,000 times the number of loads would get us our correct answer. Looking at what we have, we see that the weight is going to equal 2,000 times the number of loads, which is n. Let's go on to the next question. Members of the band sold juice and popcorn at a college football game to raise money for an upcoming trip. The band raised $2,000. The amount raised is divided equally among m members of the band. Which equation is the amount that A, that each member receives? So we have $2,000 and we're dividing it M times for each member of the band, which would be $2,000 divided by M. The correct answer is B. Let's go on to the next question. Tyler needs to complete the table for his consumer science class. He knows that one teaspoon contains three tablespoons and that one cup contains 16 tablespoons. Complete the missing values in the table. So we know one tablespoon contains three teaspoons and 16, one cup contains 16 tablespoons. Well, if we have two cups here, that means this has to be 16 plus 16, which is 32. And then for each tablespoon, we have three teaspoons. So it's gonna be three times this value. So three times 32 is 96. That's going to go here. Now here we have 12 tablespoons, which means we have 36 teaspoons. Now in this case, we can't put, we don't have a full cup. So I'm going to say we have 12 out of 16 tablespoons needed for a cup. I'm going to divide the top by two and the bottom by two, and then do it again until I realize we have three quarters of a cup. Now 48, if we have 48 tablespoons and there are three tablespoons in each tablespoon, we can just do 48 divided by three to figure out the number of teaspoons, which gives us 16. And we finished filling out our table. Pause the video here if you need a second to think about why we did this. Write an equation that represents the number of teaspoons contained in cup C. Well, if we have a cup, C, we want the number of teaspoons. We know first it's going to be 16 times C, which is going to get us the number of tablespoons. And then we'll have to multiply the whole thing by three because there are going to be three teaspoons in each tablespoon. Three times 16 is 48. So 48C will be the equation that contains the number of teaspoons T contained in cup C. Pause the video if you need to go over this or think about this question a little bit more. Problem four. The value of dry goods like apples or peaches can be measured using bushels, pecks, and quarts. A bushel contains four pecks and a peck contains eight quarts. What is the relationship between number of bushels and the number of quarts? If you get stuck, try creating a table. Okay, we have a bushel contains four pecks, so let's make a table. We're going to have, what's the smallest? The smallest is going to be a quart because it contains... We have a quart, and then we're going to have a bushel, and then we are going to have a peck. So say we have one peck. If we have one peck, no, say we have one bushel. A one bushel, we're going to have four pecks, and each peck is going to have eight quarts, which means if we have four times eight, we're gonna have 32 quarts. So now we know in a bushel, there are 32 quarts. We need the relationship between the number of bushels B and the number of quarts Q. So we're gonna do what we just did before. We're gonna say, if we have a bushel, 
4 times a bushel will get you the number of pecks. Multiplied by 32 is going to get you the number of quarts. So Q is going to equal 4 times 32, which is 128, times B. And that gets us our equation. Let's go to the next question. The data shows the number of free throws attempted by a team in its first 10 games. So we got all of our three free throws. The median is 12 attempts, and the mean is 11.5 attempts. After reviewing the data, it is determined that two should not be included, since that was an exhibition game rather than a regular game during the season. What happens to two if the median gets removed from the data set? What happens to the median if two attempts is removed from the data set? So our median is 12. And the reason our median is 12, because as we cross out, cross out, cross out, cross out, cross out, cross out, we're left with this. If we remove 2, our median actually stays 12, and so the median doesn't change. However, the mean, because 2 is a lower number and gets removed, our mean is going to go ahead and shift from 11.5 to shift to a higher value because we remove that 2 from the data set. So when we remove a low number from the data set, our mean 10 always gets higher. The same in the opposite direction happens. If we remove a high number from a data set, the mean will then get smaller. The mean shifts when we remove data from a data set that's either high or low. Problem 6. The standard deviation for a data set is 0. What can you conclude about the data? Well, if there's no deviation, it means there's no variability. And when there's no variability, that means from the mean, there is literally no difference from the mean to different points. So if the standard deviation is zero, that means every single point in the data set has the same value. Pause if you need to take a second to write this down. Problem seven. Elena has 225 in her bank account. She takes out $20 each week for W weeks. After W weeks, she has D dollars in her bank account. Write an equation that represents the amount of money left at her bank account after W weeks. Well, she starts with 225. That never changes. Now she's going to take out 20 each week. So we're taking out 20, but it's not just for one week. It's for W weeks. So W times 20 will get us the total amount she takes out. Uh, we want to represent the amount of money left in the bank account, which we're going to write as D. So we're going to set D equal to 225 minus 20 weeks. And we are done. Problem eight, Priya is hosting a poetry club meeting this week and plans to have fruit punch and cheese for the meeting. She is preparing eight ounces of fruit punch per person and two ounces of cheese per person, including herself, there are 12 people in the club. A package of cheese contains 16 ounces and costs $3.99. A one gallon jug of fruit punch costs 128 ounces and costs 250. Let P represent the number of people in the club so P is equal to people. F represents the ounces of fruit punch, OZ of punch. C represents the ounces of cheese, OZ of cheese. And B represents Priya's budget in dollars. Select all the equations that could represent the qualities and constraints in this situation. So let's get started. F fruit punch is going to be 8 times 12. Well, we need 8 ounces of fruit punch per 12 people in the club, so that works. C, ounces of cheese, is gonna be two times 399. So if she brought two ounces of cheese, would that be 399? No, because it's 16 ounces of cheese that cost 399. So this is not correct, we cross it out. B, which is budget, is going to equal two times 399. So this represents that she brought two packages of cheese plus a jug of fruit punch, which is 250. So this makes sense. D, 2P is equal to C. So two times the number of people that she has in the club is gonna equal to C, which is the ounces of cheese. Well, if each person needs two ounces of cheese, then yes, double the number of people is gonna actually equal the ounces of cheese that you need. E, 8F plus 2C is equal to B. So F is ounces of fruit punch. She's going to need 8 ounces per person, so that makes sense. Plus 2C, which is 2 ounces of cheese per person, is going to make sense, is equal to B. That's her budget. 
these values are going to represent the ounces of food that she needs, not the dollars that she spends on them. So this one doesn't make sense. So we are left with three answers, A, C, and D. Take a second and pause the video if you need to go over this before going on to the last question. Problem nine. The density of an object can be found by taking its mass and dividing by its volume. Write an equation to represent the relationship between the three quantities, density, mass, and volume in each situation. Let D be measured in grams per cubic centimeter or G per cubic centimeter. So density, mass, and volume. So we take the density of the objects can be found by taking its mass and dividing by the volume. The mass is 500 grams and the volume is 440 cubic centimeters. So we have density is going to equal 500 grams divided by 40 cubic centimeters. We're done. Two, the mass is 125 grams and the volume is V cubic centimeters. So we have density is mass is 125 grams. And the density, we don't know what it is, so or the volume, we don't know what it is, so we're just going to call it V. We're done. The volume is 1.4 cubic centimeter, and the density is 80 grams per cubic centimeter. So in this case, we know the density, which is 80 grams per cubic centimeter. No. And we know that is equal to the mass, which we don't know, so we're just going to say M, divided by the volume, which is 1.4 cubic centimeters. We're done. The mass is m, gram, m grams and the volume is cubic centimeters. We have no information here. So we're just going to say d is equal to m divided by v because that's all we know that is true. And that's it. We're taking the information we had and we're plugging it into the equation that we're given to get the expressions we need to describe what's happening in each scenario. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to my channel and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one.